Hey everybody, what goes on? And welcome to Dis About Action Figures. It's not live at 7.05. You might be thinking it is, and I'm just really late tonight. This is not live at 7.05. This is the new series here for Dis About Action Figures. Dis About Action Figures, X-Files. That's right. If you saw my most recent toy hunt last night, you know we started a new series here on Dis About Action Figures on YouTube, where we're going to do a rewatch of X-Men, the animated series, Oh, the show that created us all in the little good little geeks and nerds that we are. The show that probably is the reason why we spend all of our money and all these great things that surround us in our toy rooms and collection rooms. Um, so essentially, the way it's going to work is um, every week, hopefully, we're going to progressively work our way through from episode one tonight uh, all the way to episode 76 at the end of the final uh, season. And again, a lot of this is to do with the fact that we do have the upcoming Disney Plus series of X-Men 97. And I personally wanted to do a rewatch, and I thought, what a better way to do it than to share it with all of you. So first of all, my main goals with this is to have fun. You know, I want to encourage interaction. I want everybody to come and hang out. It'd be awesome if when I announce what episode is going to be next, that you all go back and watch the episode. No, we're not watching it live on air because I like my personal things and I don't want the Mickey Mouse house to come and take those things. So we'll not be watching the episode on air. We'll be discussing the plot, characters, best moments, sharing screen grabs, basically summarizing the episode. Um, if you're new to this channel and you haven't even watched X-Men the Animated Series, what a better time for you to jump on board right now than to actually come hang out and basically get that background heading in to provide context to that sequel series coming out on Disney+. Plus. My second favorite thing about this show is the fact that every week we're going to have a different guest host with us. Um, I'm really looking, really looking forward to and very excited to basically talk with other collectors in the community about this uh, show, about what it means to us personally, because again, it really has shaped us into the people we are in many, many ways. And I found in watching older episodes that it really basically, you know, made me the person I am in a lot of ways because they were challenging me at a young age to think about very complicated societal issues. And we'll talk more about that moving forward. But before we get started, our first ever guest here on Just About Action Figures, X-Files, is the one, the only, the great, the guy who gets there to the aisle before you do, Art G. Art G. How are you doing, sir? What's up, Tim? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, man. I'm excited to have you here tonight. Thank you so much for being generous with your time and working into your busy schedule to hang out with us tonight, buddy. Yeah, of course. No problem. X-Men. I mean, of all <laughs> things, uh, X-Men's my bread and butter. Damn. It's all back there. That's, that's my thing. I loved the show as a kid. Absolutely loved it to the point where I was every Saturday morning, I had my VCR ready and I would record every episode and I would fit like, what, six to eight hours worth of episodes on each tape without commercials. I was very good at stopping and starting without commercials. <laughs> that is incredible. You know what? This is one of the best parts of this show to me is sharing these experiences because we talked obviously off air and I had no intention of bringing this up, but man, you are dead on art. Like one of the best parts of my adult life is when I go to my parents' house for holidays. And I always find something in my parents' house that was mine as a kid in a box somewhere that either I throw away or bring home. And I love finding those old dollar store, dollar store VHS tapes where I clearly marked uh, Phoenix Saga, Dark Phoenix Saga, part one, part two, <laughs> you know, and then going back. Now you cut the commercials out, you said, right? Oh, I was so good at it. I knew when that, I knew when the episode was going to come back on within 10 seconds of the previous commercial. And I was ready to hit that record button on my VCR. VCR. Oh. My VCR. That's, For anybody that's watching awesome. at home that isn't in their 30s or 40s, a VCR is a device <laughs> used in the uh, 80s into the 90s before DVDs uh, to capture different <laughs> moving pictures. Um, but you know what? I, I appreciate your efficiency with your, with your videotapes. But as an adult, when I pop those in now, I like that I actually recorded the commercials because the commercials are just as much fun as the actual episodes. That That is true. That is true. As much as, you know, I would have, I had like little bits and pieces of commercials left um, throughout some of the episodes. So mm -hmm. seeing some of that, I was like, oh my God, look at that old toy or whatever. But yes, this is a VHS tape. There it is. <laughs> there. 
<laughs> this is a VHS that goes into a VCR. These um, are, all right. So here, here we are. I'm already deviating from the plot here, Art. So I have, yep. a, I have a picture of that on our slideshow. When I get to that, I'm going to ask you to explain where those tapes came from. Because I know, but I want you to share that with the audience if that's okay. Of course. All yep. right. So I see some people already here in the chat. Let's say hello to everybody who's here. And again, everybody, I'm encouraging participation here. I'm going to do my best to try to show comments. I want to hear your thoughts as we work our way through the episode. Uh, I'm going to try to highlight those comments as much as I can uh, as they're popping up. So really quick, let's say hello to who's here, Art. Uh, first person in the chat is going to be Eric. What's going on, Eric? How you doing, man? Uh, Eric, what's up, man? OK Figures is here. Good guy. He's in the house. Uh, Eric also says, I agree. Uh, Greg is here. Bum, 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 bum. Greg's in the house. Bum, 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 bum. There it is. I had to get that tone, right? Um, NJ Tree is here. What's up, Dan? How you doing, buddy? Uh, Matthew Becker is here. I hate how Morph just disappeared at the start of the show. Oh, we'll talk about Morph. Don't you work, <laughs> right, Art? <laughs> we will talk about Art. Uh, about, oh, we're talking about Art. We'll talk about Morph. Uh, Greg says, how is it already Art Geo Clock? <laughs> not yet. 8.30 is my time. Not not 8 o'clock. <laughs> uh, Rat Face is in the house. What's up, James? Killing it with those reviews, as always. Uh, six Packs and Nick Nax is here. What's going on, sir? How are you? Uh, <clears throat> Greg also says, X-Men, the animated series, only primetime cartoon premiere. We'll talk about that, too. And it was on one of my favorite holidays, Art. Uh, Four Feathers is in the house. What's up, Four Feathers? How you doing, sir? Radical Toys is here. How you doing, Radical? What is up? Uh, I'm not going to share Greg's next comment because we're going to talk about it. Uh, Radical Toys says, oh, sweet VHS. There's a nice blast from the past. Uh, Pat is in the house. What's up, Pat? How you doing, my good friend? Love the ticker. I stole that from RT, <laughs> by the way. Art, I totally stole that from you, man. The ticker? <laughs> I didn't know I had it as an option for free StreamYard, so I said, oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> What, what can I say? I I, I I built a toy channel and, and, and everything else copying Archie as best I can <laughs> seem successful. Uh, Four Feather says, what's up this about? Archie and everybody had internet issues this past three days. Just got a backup. Glad to hear you are up and running, sir. Uh, and Four Feather says, hello as well. All right, so everybody, I'm just going to kind of go through how we're going to kind of more or less navigate the show every week. Uh, because I'm a very organized, crazy person, um, what I did was I'm going to try to do is present more or less a, a nice narrative throughout the episode using screen grabs uh, and some other things that myself and the guests will basically look at together. Um, as I mentioned, this is X-Files. We're going to be looking at episode one, Night of the Sentinels, part one, with the wonderful Art G as a guest. Uh, Art, as you can see, it's like we're on the same wavelength here. You yeah, can see right. what I have right there in the bottom right corner. Uh, can you hold it up and explain to us what that is and where it comes from? So this was the VHS that you got from Pizza Hut during that one one event that they had to celebrate the X-Men animated series, which they only put out two, if I'm not mistaken, volume one and volume two, um, which this was Night of the Sentinels part one and two. And then this one was whatever episode three and four, oh, Enter Magneto and Deadly Reunions, so right on the cover. Um, but yes, it came with the special box, because they don't do that, came with a little mini comic, which does say Pizza Hut right on the top right there. Um, and, of course, they also came with the poster, which was on that image that you just saw that he had from Bill Seinskowick right there. Look at that. This man. Look how your, I keep stuff. <laughs> your ability to maintain <laughs> I thought I was in good shape because I still have all my old figures like in good condition. Look Pristine. It's like you ordered it online. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yes, but these were the Pizza Hut, the Pizza Hut VHS tapes of X-Men animated series. It's unbelievable. Uh, of course, it's not minty, but you know what? It's close to mint that I can get to it. But these, these tapes, even though I recorded my stuff on TV, mm -hmm. I got these when I was a kid and I was excited to watch this over and over in like high quality versus my VHS. It's incredible. And <laughs> I believe at the beginning of each episode, there's like a sit down with Stan Lee and different uh, Marvel artists, isn't there? <laughs> I don't know anymore. It's been a long time since oh, I, yeah. I checked this out. <laughs> I would have to figure out how to, I, I need a TV that can utilize 
audio video equipment, not <laughs> HDMI. That's the only way my VCR is going to work now. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I think you might be able to find that on YouTube. But I'm pretty sure it's Stan Lee doing a sit down for like three or four minutes with, I think Rob Liefeld might've been involved possibly like just different yeah. artists, you know, BSing basically. Yeah. I, I, I think you're right. It's just been so long with the way you say it now, it kind of clicked, but I have no idea. I can't remember. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to fact check myself on that one. Uh, let us know in the comments, everybody, if that's something that you uh, recall. Um, I think we might've just lost art. She'll be back in a minute. Uh, but basically, as I said earlier, I want to encourage participation in this, whether it's three people, 30 people or more. You know, I want all of you to enjoy going through this with us as we enjoy the nostalgia uh, of these moments going through things. Um, again, so feel free, leave comments, you know, here while we're live, leave comments afterwards. I'll get back to you as soon as I can on those. But, you know, feel free to, to, to talk in the chat. And again, I'll try to highlight as much as I can as we work our way through. Um, and essentially, as we work our way. Uh, again, I'll try to involve people in this process because this is something that impacted a lot of us as kids up all the way now to, to our adult age. And if you haven't seen the show, what, doing this with us might show you just how great the show really was overall. Um, all right, Art. So we're going to work our way through and start getting into the first thing, which will be a weekly segment, which we don't have to worry about tonight, called Previously on X-Men. <laughs> Um, we have nothing to talk about because this is the first episode art. <laughs> great. So um, just in the event anybody hasn't seen the show before, meaning X-Men the Animated Series, previously in X-Men is going to be an opportunity for the people on the show to basically, you know, meet or reflect and give you like a two-minute summary of what we talked about the previous week. Tonight is not a problem. <laughs> so moving forward, um, Art, we can't get into the actual show until we talk about how we got smacked right in the face as kids with one of the most amazing, iconic theme songs. And then obviously our introduction to the entire team. Art, reflect a little bit about when you watch this introduction, how you feel and just what it means to you. Uh, from before the animated series, I mean, how I even got to know the X-Men to begin with was through trading cards and then buying comic books knowing who those characters were and to finally see it in an animated show and seeing my favorite characters displayed in motion basically uh and seeing the cast of characters that's going to be on this show all displaying their individual mutant powers just something that makes them unique to begin with with this crazy song which at first you're just like, okay, but then you get used to it and you just start singing along with it. But the, all the visuals in this theme song, in, in this opening, just brings you, brings those characters to life. The characters that you've seen through your, your comic book reading over and over again, that now it's like, oh my God, look at, look at them. They're, they're moving. They're actually, it's a moving picture pretty much. Yep, yep. And, and again, just a couple of screen grabs here. Um, I remember the first moment that the logo explodes and you get that big ball of light, that, that, yeah. new, that gamma explosion, whatever. And I, I just feel like I was like blown back from my screen, you know? Um, and then I did highlight, you know, Jubilee and Wolverine here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Jubilee is supposed to be basically us in the show. You know, Jubilee is that perspective character that you are more or less meant to be in the show that she's learning about the things we're learning about as we watch. Uh, and then also Wolverine, which I wanted to add, very interesting fact. Wolverine probably being the most popular character on the show doesn't appear in episode one till almost 11 minutes in, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, that he's the cash cow and they held him back, you know, and, and brought him in later on. But, but yeah, Art, I completely agree with your sentiments. Like the song, I mean, to this day, I hear that song and it just, it makes me happy. What can I say? You know? But did you think Wolverine was, was their cash cow? Um, I think as far as all the X-Men are concerned, he, at the, I would think at the time he's probably the most popular character on the show. Cause he wasn't for me. That's really? The thing. Yeah. He was not for me. Um, of course I'm a Wolverine fan, but I never looked at him as one of my favorites on the show, mm -hmm. but he always had some great episodes, but that's mm -hmm. just how I felt. 
I like it. I like it. See, that's that's the best part about having guests on the show is hearing other people's perspectives because I was that kid running around with like fake claws pretending to like rip up my sister, you know, and uh, and here other people were, were into other characters too. I threw I threw cards. <laughs> <laughs> I threw cards and I just tried to go away. That's incredible. Just just hoping one would spark as you threw it, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh my God, that's awesome! Uh, Century Mag Collector just joined. What's up? How you doing, Ron? Good to see you, sir. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, so let's get into the episode. So, uh, Night of the Sentinels Part One. Um, as we mentioned earlier, this was a uh, prime time premiere, uh, and it was on Halloween in 1992. Now, we're not going to get too much into the history of the show, um, you know, regarding the writing and, and the stuff going on behind the scenes, because that could take up a whole hour of our time, but. Uh, a lot of interesting information about how this show came together, you know, how it was put together. Um, I did want to cite that the Infinity Equation podcast, which Art and I have both been on together in the past, um, they have some great interviews with many of the different voice actors and the writers and the showrunners from that original show. So please go and check out uh, Infinity Equation podcast. Uh, maybe we'll put a link down below or a post on Instagram so you can go back and check that out because... Uh, Art, I don't know about you, but I just started watching Infinity Equation around that time, and I was geeking out because I'm like, oh, my God, it's it's the voice of Wolverine. Holy cow, they wrote the show. They answered my question. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, so jumping right into it. So, Art, one thing I found interesting was that they spared no time here. It literally was the show starts, and right away we're getting parallel societal issues. Right away we get Jubilation Lee's um, – adopted slash foster parents who are more or less discussing she's a mutant. What do we do? I don't know how to handle this. It scares us, but we love her. So they were not, you know, treating kids as kids. They came out of the gate here, Art, treating kids with respect. Um, anything you want to add to that by chance? Uh, well, it's funny because I – for Jubilee being us as the audience, I mm -hmm. mean, going through, going through life, going through as a kid in school and things like that, just trying to find my way to fit in, in, I guess, I guess, all right, I'm going to throw this out there, but for me as a minority, mm -hmm. um, I looked at Jubilee as like, okay, that is similar because no matter, even in school, I was, I was always trying to see what I could do to fit in, or at least, you know, just keep to myself and not draw any attention. But then with these powers that she gets, of course, she has all this attention and she doesn't like it. She wants to just be left alone. Um, where I, there, there are some, there are some parallels to that, to, to how some of us may have grown up. Um, respecting the kids to treat them as more than that. I mean, your parents, they were always there for you. I mean, I guess in, in my, from my own, my own history, they, yes, they were always there um, to help out. And and sometimes they don't realize that what they do can cause more harm. <laughs> like you, sometimes you just have to deal with it yourself. You know, you got to figure it out. To learn how, learn as you go, pretty much. Um, I see from the, their parents, her parents, I should say. The father was trying to do a good thing, not realizing the potential backlash that could happen with her. So it, hey, uh, it, it is what it is when it comes to this type of storyline. But you get, you kind of understand what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, so as we work our way through, we smash cut, I love this, to an immediate close up of the Sentinel's face, which I, of course, had to put my Hazlab back behind me holding Jubilee here. Um, notice it's not a Galactus. That would make sense because I didn't unbox mine. But um, <laughs> yeah, right away, they waste very little time showing us, you know, the face of the, the enemy. And we get this really cool zoom in on the Sentinel's face. And um, one of my personal favorite parts of the episode, he tries to pick up a dog, Art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For what reason? I have no idea. And then he just walked away from it. He just was like, oh, okay. That mean freaking sentinel is messing with a dog. And that's not the last time we hear about a dog in this episode either. Um, in fact, that could be the dog we talk about later. I never thought about that before. 
Um, Ooh, yeah. So Art, as we talk about uh, this episode, and obviously a lot of this has to do with toy collecting, uh, when it comes to Marvel Legends, this isn't the exact image, but what does this make you think of regarding their marketing of a certain huh. big figure? 1992 Marvel Universe trading card. <laughs> nice. Who the year? Back of the card? <laughs> yep, back of the card. They just uh, don't have the power levels. <laughs> that's incredible. And then later in the episode, we do get a similar view of that uh, mutant life form card, which I believe is what they use for the marketing uh, when they first tease the Sentinel has lab as well. So working our way through, uh, basically the Sentinel is rolling into Jubilee's neighborhood to apprehend her. We don't know why at the beginning. However, she was upset. She left the house as she heard their, her parents talking. And she goes, where? The mall. And of course she goes to an arcade. Um, right. So here we're introduced to one of our first moments, Art, where we have uh, a citizen who is essentially mistreating another citizen based on the fact that she is different and she's a mutant. And more or less the quote here by the arcade owner after she fries the machine is, we don't want your kind here. And again, just going back to that thought process that this show was not messing around in regard to treating kids and saying, we got to talk about some, some really difficult concepts here. Um, and he's very mean to her, again, due to the fact she's a mutant. Um, I love the, he asks her, Art, do you know how much that game cost? Oh, yeah. And what does yeah. she respond? Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> my wife would say, um, are, are you being, uh, oh, my God, I can't believe I did. <laughs> Basically, she she was um, really smart. <laughs> Just said a quarter. A, a quarter. quarter. <laughs> I love it. At, at the end, we'll share our favorite lines of the episode. That's up there. That's a good one. Um, I also had to throw in a, a screen share. Uh, I love the fact that we do also have, obviously, the X-Men arcade game, which was immensely popular. Ironically enough, based upon Pride of the X-Men, not this show, um, which is a, which is the pilot of an X Men cartoon. It's on YouTube. Go check it out if everybody doesn't know about it. But uh, but yeah, it's very cool that given you know 1992, where else would a kid go when they wanted to be have some fun and blow some steam off? But an arcade. So definitely like that. So while she's at the mall, of course, she has her first run in with other mutants by literally running into Rogue and Storm, who I must say were dressed to the nines to go shopping here, Art. <laughs> oh yes. The fact that we saw those two not in uniform. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, look at that. Well, they're not in uniform. They're mm -hmm. just dressed as regular people. Yeah. And that that was always great to me. Just because <laughs> comic book wise, I'm like, you never you normally don't see them in regular oh. clothes unless they're in a uh, certain We scenario. also get Wolverine in his civilian clothes later, which spawned an action figure, but Art, this is something that has always bothered me. So Storm's powers are to control the weather. I did not realize Storm's powers were to manifest her costume out of nowhere, out of her civilian clothing. Uh, I'll be the, I'll be the, the, the jerk about this one. What if she didn't manifest? She's just burning her clothes off, and because she has a uniform underneath. I like it. I like it. Because it's electricity. I'm not making an excuse for it. It's the weirdest thing that they did, but for for kids animation, I understand why they <laughs> did that. It's it's it is it's I, I always had a laugh at that part just because I'm like, what happened here? I totally I think right. that's a, a good workaround is to say she she burnt the clothing off. Uh, Lucas says Rogue is dressed very irresponsibly considering her powers. No. <laughs> You're that's, not. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see X-Men 97 wave as figures. That would be cool. I'd be behind that. All right. So Storm uh, creates her costume. Uh, we get some our first major action sequence here where, you again, people who weren't in the know wouldn't have known what anybody's powers were at this point. They never saw a yeah. comic book. So Art, uh, so Rogue flies up and socks uh, the Sentinel right in the face. Um, then we get another scene, which I know my girlfriend Alyssa had a very strong thought process on. Um, so we get Gambit introduced to him here, speaking with uh, a boutique employee. 
And there's a little bit of flirtation going on, isn't there, Art? Flirtation. She is hunched over that counter. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. With a wink in her eye. Some some wonderful lines. Uh, Gambit. uh, I like to play solitaire unless I have somebody to play with. (laughs) Right. My God. So many good lines. All right. So we jump back. Interrupted everything. What's that? The Sentinel interrupted everything. Exactly. The Sentinel stomped all over his spot. So uh, the Sentinel acquires Jubilee, much to the chagrin of Storm and Rogue. Uh, Again, we're getting their first opportunity to showcase their powers here. Then they get outside, and we get our first introduced into leader of the team, Scott Summers, Cyclops. Notice the little gleam on his visor right there? (laughs) Um. So, Art, what do you think of this particular shot? Like, it's like your classic hero shot. Like, here's the leader. Well, it's funny because when when Jubilee gets, uh, well, when she gets gassed at that time. Yeah. But she just asks the question, like, who are you? Like, what? And then he just manly just says, Cyclops. Like, <laughs> that's supposed to mean something. <laughs> it's just funny. But, of course, in typical fashion, just blows the head off of a sentinel <laughs> it's just funny his interaction as if like you don't know who i am and i'm like oh, what <laughs> what's the the other there's so many iconic lines oh what, what's he say energy blast here's one right back oh, at you man. or something like that <laughs> uh take one from a pro that, <laughs> see, this is my i have all of it in my head <laughs> Pack photos in the house. What's up, buddy? How are you, man? What's up, man? Uh, hey, Scott. Much of I said a little earlier. Scott, how you doing, man? What's up? So, yeah, so we continue to work our way through. Uh, and this will basically give us our first exterior view of the X Mansion where they take Jubilee to heal her. Um, as the audience, if, again, if you haven't read a comic book, you're not quite sure what's going on here, just like we would feel like if we were Jubilee. Oh, yeah. um, and this is where we get our first taste of what it's like inside. So, basically, Jubilee. Uh, wakes up, she fries the machine, and again, she's exploring the X-Mansion, and she comes across different characters. We get Beast, our introduction to him. Uh, No, I didn't put this picture up wrong. He's hanging upside down, mixing chemicals. We'll talk about that later. And then, quite possibly, as people said earlier, one of the most interesting additions to the X-Men canon, Morph. Um, Art, what a great character, Morph. (laughs) Right. Morph. Morph was a great character um of course he was a character i was unfamiliar with but to see a shape-shifting power in animation i was just like oh he's a shape-shifter he's like uh and he's on the x-men team you know i was like okay let's see where we go with this but he's wearing the strike team suit and that's what was like effective to me i was like oh my god look at that he's got the he's got the uniform on Yep. Yep. That, that definitely hits at home. That's awesome. Um, and we also do get our, a, a cameo here. I didn't put it in the cameos at the end, but we get Senator Kelly here, uh, who we know uh, later on will be a very important character in the show, which at the time, most of us wouldn't have known, but he obviously will be a very important character moving forward. Oh, yeah. um, it's like they knew how to sprinkle him in right in the beginning. So you kind of mm-hmm. recognize him throughout. hundred um, percent. I had totally forgotten they took that sentinel head home. <laughs> so yeah. they, they took back the head. Uh, Jubilee sees it, freaks out. Uh, of course, the telepaths realize she's gone. But Art, they don't, know, they don't notice she's gone due to their telepathic powers. They notice she turned the monitor off. <laughs> well, of course. You know what? I, I guess is their is there telepathic power always on? And uh, to be honest, it's kind of like I had that same thought. I'm like, you would think that a person running around, first of all, and whatever's going through her mind, you would kind of pick up on that. But then again, you know. I I agree. Lucas James, shots fired. He was glad that (laughs) more, dare I say, kicked the bucket later on. Ah. So here again, we we continue to meet more of the team. We get our first introduction to the danger room. And Wolverine and Gambit are having a nice little fight in there. Jubilee, earlier in the episode, having been saved by Gambit, wants to protect him. So Jubilee kind of gets involved and decides to, you know, take a shot at Wolverine. And they'll get a good laugh at his expense here, which I kind of thought was great. (laughs) 
Um, this brings us into one of the more serious conversations, Art, where we're getting more exposition, um, where basically Jubilee's like, what am I? What is a mutant? And Storm goes into the entire thing with her. And again, this is, yes, Jubilee learning, but it's us, the audience, being explained to regarding what is a mutant, what is the school for. Um, so again, a very important moment in the show here, Art. It was. And it was very speechworthy. I mean, Storm basically says, we learned, we're here to learn and control our abilities, pretty much. But then she throws out, like, for the benefit of mankind. I mean, and then to me, or as Jubilee, it's kind of like, for what purpose? Because if it's for the benefit, and then she follows up with, then why do people hate us? Yep. It's kind of like because of the whole, and then of course, Storm just, people fear what they don't understand. And that's still, that still is life now. Yep. What people don't fear, people will fear what they don't understand. And it's funny how, they don't want to understand. They just want it to go away. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of life lesson stuff there. Exactly. And and that was one of the best things about this show. Like you're 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 being taught life lessons and you're being taught to be understanding through the, the lens of these characters. So we get the real bad guy revealed here. We get Gyric for the first time. Um he essentially <laughs> uses the parents to try to find where she is, uh, as he wants to find out who the X-Men are because they were revealed for the first time at the mall, saving her. Um, Jubilee, really not good at not getting gassed, gets gassed again. And then we get another important moment here, where Cyclops is essentially providing the context to us about what the purpose of the X-Men are. You know, questioning whether or not Xavier's plan for them to infiltrate uh, the mutant database is the right thing for the team to be doing. Um, Chucky basically explains it's something we have to do, it's an important mission. And what I really liked, Art, is this introduces us to the first moment of the adversarial relationship between Scott and Logan. Yeah. Yep. Um, for me, I know that my limited reading of getting comic books, because you know I would have to ride my bike for God knows how long to get to a comic book store. And whatever X-Men comic book I could get, I'll pick it up. Now, any banter between Cyclops and Wolverine was very minimal from my reading for what I did pick up. So mm -hmm. watching it here, I was like, oh, wow, look at this. These two are constantly <laughs> constantly fighting with each other. And showing this was kind of like, because when you think of team, as a kid, when you're, as a kid, he's your team leader. You're going to always listen to the direction of your team leader. Because as kids, whether I was playing soccer, or baseball, I knew I had to always follow the direction of my coach or like my team captain. And Wolverine just being like, F you, man. I'm going <laughs> to do what I want to do. Yep. And obviously that sets up a lot more for the show regarding, you know, the future love triangle with Gene and everything else. Um, our first look at the Blackbird. So they do uh, take off in the Blackbird. Uh, again, just wanted to touch on this more kind of adult tones. We get Rogue kind of as they're walking toward their mission, you know, explaining what it was like the first time she realized she could not have physical contact with other people. And again, just really explaining out to the audience that, you know, much like Spider-Man, great power, great responsibility. Here, great power can also be a curse. You know, she has the abilities to take other people's strength and powers, but yet she can't experience physical touch. And I really like how this opening episode of the series they're giving us a little bit of a sprinkle of the background of basically every character as we work our way through. Um, <laughs> one of the better lines are Wolverine, you know, comes back to help and he's like, trail ran dead, got bit by a dog too. <laughs> um, but I never thought about it. Mate, was The dog that he got bit by, was that the one that the Sentinel tried to pick up? That, that, that's a good theory. It's possible. <laughs> He's but running just, around now considering the Sentinel probably knocked him out of his fenced area. <laughs> uh, so the strike team is working its way in. Their goal is to break in and destroy the mutant files to stop the uh, Sentinels from tracking down mutants. Um, and near the end of the episode here for episode one, uh, they see a convoy rolling in. 
and Rogue with other iconic line. Uh, Cyclops, you look more nervous than a long-tailed long cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Okay. <laughs> I think I've used that in my life at some point as an expression. <laughs> uh, I have never used that in my life. <laughs> but I remember uh, the last time I really listened to that quote again uh -huh. was there was a um, a cosplayer. I forgot. It was probably from That in the Sun, if you watch some of their, his YouTube um there was a rogue cosplayer or actor actress i should say mm -hmm. and she used that a lot because she was she looked just like rogue pretty much and i was <laughs> and that's always where i remembered it from before you know the x-men animated it so she used it all the time <laughs> that's incredible uh this basically you know the team works its way through wolverine senses the ozone and notices that there's beams they all kind of get across those surveillance beams and I believe Morph's exact expression is clear sailing from here. And then we end the first episode with a tease where it shows us the audience that behind that closed door is a room full of armed guards. And we end with Storm's hand touching the doorknob to unlatch that door, presumably walking in to get lit up by this, this army of people inside. And that's the end of the first episode. They leave us on a cliffhanger. Um, yeah. So what I did want to take some real moment here to talk about, my girlfriend, have you never watched this? Watched it last night, as I mentioned. And she was like, hey, did they do this really cool computerized uh, credits at the end every episode? And I had to think about it. And I loved this as a kid art. But they only did it for like part of the season, I think. I feel like they only did it for the first season. Because okay. um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was just for the first season. And I liked it too because computer-generated images like this were were brand new, brand new. Because remember when Spider-Man animated series used this type of technology a little bit in their in their stuff, or the reboot cartoon, if you remember that. Man, one. reboot! Yeah. <laughs> we can so, do an hour. We can make yeah. this into a two-hour show <laughs> if we really wanted to, with all the rabbit holes we can go down, Art. <laughs> right, but. Seeing that because it's X Men, it's kind of like wow. If this, like in my head, it was like, I hope they make a video game. You know. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness! So many great comments, everybody. I've been trying to show them on the screen as we work our way through. I'm seeing a lot of people mention uh, the Genosian episodes. A lot of great cameos in this show, which actually brings us into uh, our cameo section, which um, we are going to add one to the list that Art had noticed and I forgot about. Uh, so. Uh, Every week we'll point out significant cameos because a big part of the show was showing there's a larger universe around it. And the writers weren't always allowed to include certain characters, but they got around it by showing little bits and pieces, which we'll talk more about. Yeah. Uh, here we opened up with Sabretooth as a big tease for future episodes. We did get Cannonball on, on a monitor. And then Arthur is another character as well, right? Yep. Domino was on the monitor before Cannonball during that whole thing where Gene says, these monitors are on. So yes, that was, um, Domino was first, then Cannonball, then the news reporter. Gotcha. So again, when you watch these episodes, it's not the kind of show where you can look down at your phone. Like nowadays, when I'm watching something, I'm looking at my phone, whatever, you can look away and miss something really cool in a split second watching this cartoon. Um, Art, as we kind of close out the first episode of X-Files, um, we have some questions to go through. Um, so I'm going to put you on the uh, the, the burner here. So you're going to answer each question first. All right. I can do all of that in one shot. All right. Art, go first. so yeah. at the end of every episode, we're going to ask our guest for the favorite character, their favorite quote, their favorite moment, and then at the end, we'll discuss our closing thoughts. Art, the floor is yours, sir. So as minimal of a part she, she had in this episode, Rogue, of course, is one of my favorite characters. To have her, of course, being introduced in this show, she was dressed up in regular clothes, perfectly fine. And then, of course, you know, nailing a sentinel pretty much. Mm -hmm. Then, when you, it comes to it, the favorite quote and the favorite moment in the episode was towards the end, because where she opens up, kind of like a therapy session of how she realized what her powers are. But at the same time, how her father completely disapproved of her and her emotion 
her emotion that comes out in, in her words stating the fact that I wanted to kill my daddy was just like it was that I guess powerful enough that that hatred from her father in her to have her run away was because that was her dad you know mm -hmm. me coming for, as a father myself when I have my daughter if I ever said anything like that to my daughter and I it, it, now of course I completely disowning a person like that that's crazy yeah. right but for Rogue to do that um, to run away for the mere fact and have that emotion against her father because of how her father treated her for the fact that she's now a mutant is unbelievable mm -hmm. and she opened up like that on that episode was like wow now as a kid it's kind of different because you don't really think about it like that but as an adult in this animated series she just said i wanted to kill my father and that's okay you're going to say that on the cartoon and that's why i was like rogue is so many different levels in regards to um her character development throughout the scene and this yep. first one that's one of my favorites Closing thoughts on episode one. It's amazing on the introduction of the characters that you get so far. They sprinkled in a lot of the characters that they only saw for a moment, like Beast and Morph, Xavier, Dean Gray. They were all towards the end. Um, but they gave you a snippet of them. And then, of course, at the same time, at the end of the episode was a cliffhanger. You don't get that many cliffhangers in cartoons anymore. Yeah. Um, the fact that this entire series cliffhangers each way, it, it was, it always wanted to bring you back to see what happens next. I don't know the way anime does. I know you don't watch anime, but still, mm -hmm. I just feel like one of those things that this good storytelling is happening when we were back in the nineties and just watching them as kids wanting to see what was next. This first episode was great because it just introduced you to a cast of characters that you don't know anything about, but you want to know more about them because they put these real life kind of scenarios of how you would go about you know, as a kid and what can you do? How, mm -hmm. how can you go through it? Now, of course, this is all, you know, sci-fi technically, but still <laughs> you can kind of relate to some of this. this mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I completely agree. Great points are, you know, and again, definitely just the the ability to connect with these characters and these serious emotional issues and feelings just th that they're expressing in episode one, you know? And, you know, as the series goes on, being that it's episodic, which also wasn't a regular thing in cartoons, to be episodic and lead into those episodes, like you said, not many cliffhangers in cartoons, um, it allowed for each episode to, as we move forward, focus on some characters. So there's times in future episodes we don't see many characters uh on one end of things but they focus more on rogue or on wolverine and it's just a wonderful part of the show but as far as my favorites at the end um my favorite character because he isn't around as long is gonna have to be morph you mentioned the shape-shifting uh this is evil morph unfortunately um but we'll talk more about that later uh, i love again the just the, the jacket i love the look the x-men strike team gear favorite quote i don't want to get it wrong um there's so many but it had to be Beast for me when he's hanging upside down and Jubilee's watching him and he's mixing the Erlenmeyer flasks or whatever they are. And he goes, huh, would not be good if these mixed together and exploded. Be very disconcerting. Disconcerting <laughs> yet provocative. provocative. <laughs> and what's going through Jubilee's head seeing this giant blue monster in a lab coat mixing things together that might explode. Um, so that's my favorite quote. Favorite moment. I, I, I'm going to kind of, do what you did and kind of morph morph into one. I really thought it was cool seeing Morph on screen, you know, going through his power set, replicating characters, replicating Jubilee. Um, so that was neat. And just closing thoughts, Art, I agree with everything you basically said. You know, it's a great series. Um, just a lot of a lot of serious moments in it, which they're trusting kids to be able to go through and understand that. And um, ultimately. Um, I, I just, I'm looking forward to talking more about the show in the future with, with the audience and with our guests and just kind of having fun with this and seeing where it goes. Um, I'll be honest, everybody, will we get through all 76 episodes? I don't know. If I did one, one show a week art for 76 weeks, I'll be a, a slightly older man by then. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. You got to do it now. You, exactly. You cannot take a break. 
but uh, it's something I'm looking to do and we'll have fun with it for as long as we can do it and kind of go from there. So um, with that said, again, typically we're going to shoot to be uh, a little less than probably 35 minutes tonight with it being the first episode, you know, obviously I had to go through some um, upfront information to share with the audience. Um, Art, as always, sir, I'm honored to have you on with me anytime. I love sharing time with you, sir. Um, Please tell people watching where they can find you, what your socials are and, you know, what your upcoming projects might be. Um, of course, you can find me here on YouTube under Art G. I'm pretty sure I'm the first one that will pop up if you do a search on it. Um, you can also go into Art G underscore collection on my Instagram, um, where you can find any toy hunts that I have, possible toy photography, or any kind of like diorama stuff that I might want to do. So you can always check me out there. Plus, you can message me there on Instagram as well. Um, any upcoming projects? Uh, yes, there are some things in the works. Um, trying to do some more figure reviews, trying to change it up a bit, trying to do some little things here and there. Um, at the same time, we have, or I have quite a bit of, I don't know. Uh, what, what do I got? Oh, live streams on Mondays, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep the schedule. Like Tuesday, Saturdays are toy hunts, live streams are Mondays. Anything else sprinkled in between, I will definitely try to do. That's awesome, Art. And again, please, most of you already are, but if you're not subscribed and following Art, please do so. I've said this before, you know, Art was a, a major influence on me starting my YouTube channel, being a, a, pencil, a fellow Pennsylvanian, and just Art's always been great helping me out, kind of build out my channel and my content. So I thank you for all of your mentorship over the years, Art. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you, most of you know me on the channel already. If you're not following me at Instagram, at this is about underscore 12, please check that out. Again, we're going to try to do these weekly. I'll be honest, the night might be different each week. I'm really trying to work with different guests. Um, I'm trying not to go and, and cut in, uh, uh, go live against other people's live streams. I apologize tonight being the first episode. I unfortunately did kind of butt in a little bit uh, uh, over Jay Shot and Matthew. I'm sorry, guys. I know I talked to you about it already. Uh, but a lot of very fun, cool guests coming down the road. They're going to hop on with me. Uh, typically, I'll update it over at Instagram, letting people know who the guest is going to be. Obviously, what episode is going to be covered is the next episode. So I really like to, everybody, if you're going to watch and hang out, if you have the opportunity to watch the episode ahead of time, feel free. Come hang out in the chat and kind of share this with us, everybody. So with that said, thank you all for watching so much. If you're new, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free for you. It doesn't cost you anything. Help score the channel tremendously in the March to 4,000 subscribers. Uh, Art's pushing for 5,000 subscribers. Give him a sub. I'm like five away from 4,000 right now. So Amen. we're almost there. <laughs> almost yeah. there. Um, as always, for daily toy content and daily toy news, check me out at Instagram, just about underscore 12. Hey, everybody, if you're going toy hunting this week, please try to remember the three Ps of the toy hunt. Patience, persistence, most of all, politeness. Take care, stay healthy. We'll be seeing all of you at the pegs. Thanks, Art. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Have a great night.